Hello and welcome to Your World This Week, the weekly roundup for all the top news stories of the week. The top news stories this week are There has been a marked dip in the number of daily COVID-19 cases, as many as 62,480 new COVID-19 cases and 1,587 deaths were recorded in India in the last 24 hours. That's what the Union Health Ministry informed on Friday. According to the ministry, the active cases dropped below the 8 lakh mark after 73 days. With the new cases, the country's tally has climbed to 7,98,000 active cases and 3,83,000 deaths approximately. The daily positivity rate in India now stands at 3.24%, while the weekly positivity rate stands at 3.80%. The daily positivity rate has now been below 5% for the 11th consecutive day. Following the massive uproar over use of newborn calf serum in Bharat Biotech's COVID-19 vaccine co-vaccine, the health ministry said on Wednesday that the newborn calf serum is not an ingredient of the final co-vaccine vaccine vaccine product. The ministry in a statement said the facts have been twisted and misrepresented in some social media posts, which suggested that the indigenously developed co-vaccine contains a newborn calf serum. The Hyderabad-based vaccine manufacturer also in a statement said that while the serum is used in the process of making the vaccine, it's not present in the final formulated product. The Serum Institute of India hopes to start the clinical trials of Novavax's COVID-19 vaccine, Covovax, on children in July. This will be the fourth coronavirus vaccine to undergo a clinical trial for children in the country. The SII is also planning to introduce Covovax, its version of the US firm Novavax's vaccine candidate in India by September. Moving on, the assault on a 72-year-old man from the minority community in Ghaziabad sparked off a massive row this week. Rubbishing the all allegations, Uttar Pradesh police confirmed that there is no communal angle in the incident in Loni and arrested five accused of assaulting the 72-year-old man. The police also stated that the action would also be taken against the complainant for providing wrong facts. The UP police on Tuesday filed FIR against nine entities, including some journalists and politicians in Twitter India, in connection with this incident. Uttar Pradesh police sent a legal notice to Twitter India Managing Director Manish Maheshwari regarding the viral video of the assault on an elderly man in Loni. He has been asked to record his statement after microblogging site let the anti-social messages go viral. According to the legal notice, Maheshwari has been asked to come to the police station Loni border and record a statement within seven days. The notice said that while some people use their Twitter handle as a tool to spread hatred in society, Twitter Communication India and Twitter Incorporated did not take any action against it. This comes after when Twitter has lost its status as an intermediary platform in India as it does not comply with the new IT rules. According to sources, Twitter is the only social media platform among the mainstream that has not adhered to the new laws. Now, instead of being considered just a platform hosting content from various users, Twitter will be held directly and editorially responsible for posts published on its platform. In some political news now, Chirag Paswan was replaced as Lok Jan Shakti Party National President on Thursday by his uncle and MP Pashupati Kumar Paras. On Sunday, Pashupati Kumar, the youngest brother of LGP founder Ram Vilas Paswar, along with five other MPs, met Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla and handed over a letter to him seeking removal of Chirag Paswan as party chief and as the Lok Sabha parliamentary party leader. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla accepted Paras as the floor leader of the LGP in the lower house. Chirag Paswan, meanwhile, on Thursday rejected his uncle Pashupati Kumar's election as a party president, saying that the meeting organized in Patna was unconstitutional and lacked even minimum attendance of its national executive members. He also said that his party has also written to the election commission, urging it to stop the Paras-led faction from using its symbol and flag in its meeting. Sister Lucy Kalapura, who had participated in protest against rape accused Bishop Franco Mulakkal has now been ordered to vacate her convent. This comes after her appeals to legal forums within the Catholic Church against her dismissal on disciplinary grounds were rejected.
In some international news, leaders of the group of seven nations have pledged over 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses for the rest of the world, either directly or through funding to Cobavax. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced this would include 100 million doses from the UK, Johnson said. During the 47th G7 meeting in the United Kingdom, several world leaders appreciated India's G7 engagement and Prime Minister Narendra Modi's intervention. The Ministry of External Affairs said, adding that the Indian engagement was fruitful and productive. US President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin concluded their Geneva summit meeting on Wednesday between what the American leader called two great powers, wrapping up more quickly than expected. The pair's second sit-down with aides present on both sides lasted about 65 minutes. Biden and Putin created a framework for sustained engagement on a range of issues including arms control and cybersecurity while communicating their respective red lines. The two sides are also sending their ambassadors back to Washington and Moscow to facilitate a productive dialogue. Bollywood star Akshay Kumar paid a visit to the brave hearts of the Border Security Force on Thursday and spent a memorable day with them in Kashmir. The Mission Mangal actor took his Twitter handle and shared a series of photos from his visit to the LOC, where he interacted and even shook a leg with the BSF soldiers. And here is the viral video of the week. Hope you like this edition of Your World This Week. We will be back next week with yet another episode of Your World This Week. Have a good day.